Hey guys, welcome to the secret history hidden inside your aquarium or your tub. In this case, it's an aquarium and some tubs. My name is Alexander Williamson, and today we're going to relate fish with a couple notions uh, in a roundabout way. So it's summertime, and that means it's tubbing time. And if you're into the hobby, you know that means raising fish and or their food out in tubs. And it's just a near free way to get food and as well as uh, so you feed your fish the best protein and diet you can and it's also a good way to color up your fish so believe it or not fish tan so uh, when you see very famous uh, shows like um, in Asia where they show off arowanas or koi a lot of times they'll put them in natural light uh, koi obviously but even indoor fish and they'll color up they need their vitamin D just like any any other critter and uh, it's good for them to have that natural light and it also brings out their colors beyond that when you feed them live food like mosquito larvae daphnia um, blood worms things like that they get omega-3s and they also get carotenoids now carotenoids give them the nice red and orange colors and in guppies and a lot of tetras from South America, they can either get it from a few sources of fruit or they can get it in from larvae from uh, other creatures or bugs that fall into the water. So that's the first little bit is talking about their diet and what goes into it. But what we're really interested in here is how I'm raising these this larva. So the first part I want to talk to you about is how this these uh this is mosquito larva here and if you have any water out in the you know subarctic region even the arctic a lot of places you can get mosquitoes and especially in the summer spring uh, early fall you can get mosquitoes here this is about prime time for them in washington state in seattle and it's august so we get them right around this time if we have a cold night, they'll come and lay on the water. The adult mosquitoes will come and land in the evening or early morning, lay their eggs, and then fly off. Well, when they lay their eggs, they put them in these things called rafts. And the rafts float perfectly atop the water. And one cool thing about the rafts is they are hydrophobic. So watch me drop a, a little bit of water on, on the water surface and you can see it, it goes through uh you know it ripples through the water but when i pick some up and i put it on a hydrophobic surface watch when it hits just right It'd help if i was looking not through my camera it actually pushes it away so watch over here you can actually get it to uh, send a ripple if it's not wet already and by wet it actually won't absorb water it will just simply sit on top balancing on top of of it so we'll try over here let's try one more time so do you see how that scooted everything see that so now if we just do that to the water you just get you know try it on a pine cone nothing but if you do it right on top of it, there was perfect. So that's caused by a chemical coating. And the chemical is, is kind of an oil lipid layer, but it's also a texture of the eggs in the raft. And they're packed in so only the outermost eggs have that. And the top of them have that. Now I wish we could zoom in and I could show you with this camera what the structure looks like but essentially let me use some water and essentially it looks kind of like this with the eggs in rows so they're in one row this way and they're in another row that crosses this way and they spiral so that they're in a spiral like my that i'm so ready with a pen and then they spiral so that they counter spiral in this way. Now, if you count the the ring on these spirals from this spiral and then these spirals, 
you'll see that here it's just one and one. Then here, the next ring around is going to be two, so it'll be one and two. And then the next one will be three, so one, two, three. And then, so what you're doing is you're creating a Fibonacci sequence. Now, I've touched on this before. We touch on it uh, involving the golden ratio, and if you're a mathematician or a geometry person, we can get into uh, other things, later numbers, the fact that Fibonacci was not the guy's name, <clears throat> uh, the fact that Sanskrit cultures invented this pattern, most likely, yada yada. But we're going to talk about Fibonacci, who is the mainstream Western uh, creator of this notion, or master of this notion. And what he realized is that when you take a number sequence and you line up like one, so you got one plus one and then two, and then the next in the sequence in the pattern size wise, and we're, let's pretend this is volume. So you got one and one and then two, and then you add up the one plus the two, so you get three and you've got a bigger volume. And then this will be 2 plus 3, so you've got 5, which is an even bigger volume. And then you're adding 5 plus 3, you get 8, which is an even bigger volume, and so on and so forth. You can, I, I hope you see the pattern. So you're, you're taking the last two and you're multiplying it. Now, this may seem dry, but don't, don't leave me yet. So what I want you to do is go to your aquariums go to your flowers, go to the natural world, and look for this. It's everywhere. So it's in trees. It's part of fractal geometry. It, you know, it's the notion of how things branch out and get bigger and bigger. When you look at a tree, there's a stick, and then that stick has a stick or two, and then each of those has a stick or two. Uh, originally, it was a thought problem that the man uh, that we attribute Fibonacci's number to, we're going to go see it in real life, it was a thought problem about rabbits reproducing. And each generation of rabbits, he thought that the first generation, if they could have babies every month, there'd be, at the end of the month, there'd be two babies. Say, say rabbits have two babies. The next month, there would be four. The next month, there would be eight. The next month, and so on and so on, exponentially being born, plus the ones that were alive. Now, want to see the Fibonacci sequence in a actual, in reality, like those spirals I was talking about, you'll be looking at, and it's not perfect in sunflowers, even though that's what people always uh, show off as the Fibonacci number, but the outside and the center do not... Uh, factor in as true Fibonacci numbers. They're actually, uh, they're actually just slightly off, but they're really close, and they contain Fibonacci numbers. But here you can see that the the top ring is going to be one or one bud, and then the next one will be two, then three around it, and then five, eight, and so on until it goes out and out and out, and it arranges in this interesting pattern. And in nature, that pattern has realized that if it tilts each time it's aligned, each time it's aligned, if it if it changes that position somewhere between three and nine uh, degrees, I mean, it can be more than that, but usually that's the best because then it can fit a lot of the pattern in, then you actually uh, end up with the most, the most you can fit into a space is is what that gives you so that's the most seeds that can fit into that sunflower or the most petals on that artichoke for the given space for the volume of those now the other place we see it commonly right here is in pine cones so pine cones you can see you see the it's it's less apparent that it spirals but it's still doing it where it starts with smaller and gets bigger and bigger and they overlap and rotate as it goes. Now these are itty bitty pine cones, but let's see here, we'll find you a bigger pine cone. So same deal, as it gets bigger, and there's different species that have different sequences, but usually they're rotating, and this is kind of odd, by prime numbers. So 
just a little bit of uh, math in your aquarium or in your bin or your tub, whatever you want to call it. Now, lastly, I wanted to get back, uh, if you're still with me, I wanted to talk about the hydrophobic uh, egg rafts. Now, those are actually, the, the pattern on them has been used by 3M as well as a German company, and they have patterned or they have patented various versions of that into hydrophobic surfaces that won't get wet. So for like bathrooms that people spray down, that way they're able to spray it down and it beads up. Or raincoats like Gore-Tex and things like that, where it wicks off. That came from mimicry, from biomimicry of nature. So all this stuff is going on. And this is just one little bit of it about a man who lived in uh, around 1175, uh, Middle Ages, uh, that the Fibonacci sequence is attributed to, and uh, it wasn't until the 1800s that people gave it that name. But regardless, it's some interesting math, history, science tied in, and the other bit of that is we would have never gotten it in the Western world unless that man his father happened to be a consulate for the city-state of Pisa at the time and he was stationed in the Arab world which traded with the Indian world uh, with India proper and pa Pakistan and Sri Lanka and they already had this concept although not named as such uh, they had it in their maths so he came back as, as a teenager with these concepts, uh, with algebra, uh, which is an Arabic word, uh, and came back and brought it to us to torture you in high school with. So, I hope you learned a little something as a parting uh, little story. So, the hydrophobic textures, a German company, you can Google this, used it on walls, and they're using it in Europe around soccer stadium districts because young men have been urinating on walls after games instead of using the restroom, and they've made it so it's so hydrophobic that it comes back and splashes on them. So they pee on the wall and it pees back on them. So, kind of funny, kind of interesting, and what the heck did that have to do with fish tanks? I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care of yourself, your critters, your family, and in turn, that'll take care of you. It's one big circle. That's how it works. Like, subscribe, and swim on. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.